Here we go. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, very good. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to AU. Um, as Anna said, I'm Phil Morse. I'm the Assistant Vice President for University Safety and Security Services, which also includes risk management, uh, safety, and transportation programs. Fitz Smith, who is our new uh, Assistant Vice President in risk, couldn't be with us today, so I'll handle any areas that, that he would be responsible for. So first, we just start off by telling you a little bit about our police uh, department. There are 37 police officers here 24-7. They attend an 11-week police academy. We also have full jurisdiction and authority by statute on all university properties. So our police department is the primary police services for our community. Here in our, uh, where I'm located now is our emergency operations center, but next door is our uh, 911 center. And uh, a couple ways to contact us are there on the screen. If you have an emergency while you're on campus, you can call us at 202-885-3636 if you're using cellular or from an, or an extension phone of 3636. And our non-emergency numbers are there as 2527 and 25. Um, I'm sorry, outside, you can also dial our non-emergency non number and then our extension internally for, for uh, non-emergencies. We have a lot of security technology that's located here in our command center. We are uh, monitoring video um, and monitoring all our access control to all our buildings, all alarm systems that we have throughout the campus properties. We have a very secure radio system that allows us to operate even in uh, a crisis situation like a 9-11 where commercial systems are down. Our radio system uh, maintains operation um, and is encrypted. So we can continue to give direction um, to uh, our police officers and some of our partners uh, that have secure radio uh, channels with us like Res Life. We also monitor all the fire alarm uh, for all our buildings. We have a network command center here at communications. All our buildings report to us. We can see any trouble alarms. We can see when a building goes into alarm. Uh, we can see smoke detection systems uh, as well as any fire detection. From the command center, we also send emergency notifications to our uh, campus community. You, uh, as a new employee, have access to your own account. If you go to the emergency preparedness website under alerts, you can access your account by using your username and password. You can see uh, the information that has been downloaded. You can add a cell phone number and as many, I believe, as four cell phone numbers um, if we also, uh, from the command center, are able to lock our campus down. What that means is 10 years ago, most of our buildings would uh, have to be locked down manually, which is, is not very effective in a critical situation where expediency to safeguard the community is very important. So over the past uh, five years, we have been able to uh, provide uh, all our buildings with the ability to lock down remotely with a single push of a button from this location. Any of our lockdown, shelter in place, or evacuation plans can be found at the emergency preparedness website. And we use our lockdown and our emergency preparedness plans to uh, safeguard our community and educate our community. There are other ways to contact the police department as you traverse our campus, both in the garages and out outside, you'll see what's called emergency blue phones, the bright blue light. There's a camera system there. And with a push of a button, you can connect to us. Obviously we know where you are and we can respond uh, police to support you. In all our classrooms, we have lockdown capability. 
again, 10 years ago when I assessed uh, safety and security here at American University upon my arrival, we found that we had 110 classrooms throughout campus that did not have this capability. So now we have all our classrooms uh, and all our lecture halls um, equipped with uh, manual lockdown capability. Our emergency notification system, we will notify you, uh, obviously, in emergency situations and give you direction. Uh, weather delays or any weather emergencies. Uh, this past summer, we had a couple uh, tornado warnings as an example and, and issued warnings uh, to our campus. And then the most favorite notification we always provide to our community is school closing. Um, so anytime there is an emergency, weather emergency, weather delays or school closings, you will receive via email and text uh, information about that emergency situation, weather delay or school closing. We also have other means in which to uh, provide those notifications in an emergency. So we have installed a campus-wide PA system. Also in large assembly areas, we have what are called alert beacons. We have a network of TVs throughout campus called Four Winds, and we, you know, take over those uh, networks and put banners up with information that we want you to have. We do have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram accounts at American University, and they also follow up with information about any emergency that is occurring. The Rave Guardian app is our safety app. We ask that everybody download Rave Guardian from any app store onto your device. It is a free app. You activate it by using your AU username and credential. And then you can go in depth with your profile uh, if you'd like, um, all the way down to what classrooms that you're teaching in um, and or where your office spaces are. There's also a personal profile that you can fill out, for instance, if you have food allergies. Um, and when you activate the Rave Guardian app, it gives you connectivity to the police department with the push of a button. Once you activate it, it tells us where you are and it opens up a lot of communication. Once these are activated, we respond police immediately to your location. You can also use this while you're in the District of Columbia, so to and from work. And there's also a 911 icon that you can use if you need to uh, notify police while you're en route. There's a virtual escort capability with our um, safety app. You can put where you are, where you're going, what time you'll get there, and uh, you can be monitored virtually and if you don't arrive or acknowledge your route in the time frame that you've given us, it will activate an alarm. Again, show us where you are, and we'll begin to open a line of communication with you or respond to you when uh, it is activated. We are not monitoring and cannot monitor your location unless you use the emergency um, activation. There are also phones in the classroom, and those will ring in an emergency and provide you um, information about what's going on and what you should do. A lot of people bring guests uh, to our campus. There's also the ability for guests to sign up through our emergency preparedness website. So if you use, if, if you see, uh, as you traverse campus, you can see that we have a lot of different means to contact you and give you direction in an emergency situation. On your computers, your personal computers, um, you can download uh, the desktop alertus. So if you're not monitoring your cell phone, as an example, but teaching from your laptop, a banner will take control of the screen and alert you to the emergency 
that is occurring. And you can see uh, here uh, how you would go about doing that. This is our Rave Guardian uh, personal safety app. That's what it looks like on the left on your screen. And you can see the various uh, icons. The Guardian is the virtual escort and the safety timer. You can also send us tips. You can contact us with the icon on the bottom left or right if you're traversing the city. If you're using our shuttle system, our shuttle systems are connected to the police department by radio systems. So anytime you're uh, on board a shuttle and there is an emergency, there is uh, the shuttle driver has direct communication with us should they need it. Here is where all our resources are located. Again, you manage your account. You go to alerts, the emergency preparedness website, you will be able to update or add to your account. There are regular uh, fire drills uh, at our residence halls, um, and there's regular testing of our fire and safety systems in our academic buildings. At the beginning of each semester, we will be sending via email from University and Safety and Security Services an email with all our resources, all the links to connect to them or telephone numbers to make a call uh, to ask questions. We'll send this to you at the beginning of every semester. So you'll probably see this sometime mid September to the 1st of October. There's also personal preparedness guidance within the uh, website. And also we established a new global safety program. So if you're traveling uh, abroad, um, there are certain requirements um, as well as uh, safety procedures and tracking that we enable while you're overseas to ensure that you're safe and that you get the information that you need. Threat assessment and management, we have a robust team um, and we're, you know, we're committed to the safety and well-being of our community. And this team uh, meets routinely and as needed. And we're, with the simple goal of you know, mitigating any uh, behavioral threats. The Dean of Students Office has what's called the CARE Network. Anyone can submit a CARE Network report. And if you have uh, any problems or issues uh, with a student, um, we recommend you use the CARE Network as a means in which to get them support uh, that they need. We, we have personal services contracts with psychologists. Um, our AU Counseling Center participates in this. Uh, we have threat management associates, and we have the Washington Regional Threat Analysis Center to support us if for any threat management that would take place with non-affiliated people outside the university. The, the goal here is to assess it and assess it early, refer and support, and then monitor. Um, law enforcement interdiction, that's the last thing uh, that, we, that we do. Um, and, if, and if needed, uh, we go through our judicial system uh, in the U.S. Attorney's Office to address any threats that are external from our uni university community. Again, we just wanted to give you uh, some contact information. Don't forget to download Raid Guardian. And as you get acclimated and coming to and from campus, remember that those blue phones are out there for you. Uh, if you don't remember the numbers, if you haven't entered them into your phone yet, um, the emergency phones are there for you to use. And I think that is, we just want it to be very high level and then open it up for any questions that you may have for us. 
Thank you so much, so, Phil. So if you uh, wouldn't mind raising your hand uh, and then unmuting, uh, Rob, why don't you get started and then feel free to also ask questions in the chat. Thank you. I think I've spoken too much already this morning. I just want to say to Phil a big thank you. Um, as a disabled professor who works with two forum crutches, there are times when it is extremely, it is snowy, it is icy. And the fact is that I really can't get from the parking lot to uh, my, my basically my uh, office or the building which I teach in. And you guys have picked me up and taken me to that specific, uh, to that specific um, uh, building. And so I can't thank you enough for doing that. And people who, are, who have a disability on campus, they should know that you are there and available to be very helpful as you've done for me a number of times. So first off, I wanted to say thank you. And two, to let people know that uh, you guys have that ability to be very helpful to disabled professors. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob, or Rob, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we'll go to Rodney Hobson. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, Phil, thank you again so much. I'm um, Rodney Hobson, acting co-dean in the School of Education down in the Spring Valley building. And I'll be one of the people that will be taking the lead on some of the safety issues that we were so happy to meet with you recently about. Let me just also say, based on the last comment, thank you again for being accessible and responsive to us in that meeting at the end of July. And so I just wanted to just, um, it's probably a, a time for another conversation, but just just thank you initially for, for taking that concern and following up on some issues here down. And maybe a general question about how you, we're not campus, we're not in the middle of campus. And so give us an idea also how extensive your offices are and, and maybe a little bit of background about how you also have jurisdiction over a building that's not very far away, but also keep a steady eye uh, through how you also monitor Spring Valley. That would be really useful for some of our new employees and colleagues as well. Thanks so much, Phil. You're welcome. Thanks, Rodney. And, and, and to, to everybody here, I am very accessible uh, to the community. When you have uh, problems or concerns, I want you to come to me and express those. And then I will personally meet with you or people from my team will. Um, we, we want you to feel safe um, and we want to be able to have the conversation. So thanks for that, Rodney. Uh, with respect to off-campus, we have a number of off-campus locations. Those locations by law are under our jurisdiction and authority. So we can uh, respond to them, we can patrol them, uh, we can investigate crimes, um, you know, we, we can bar people from the property. We can do everything a, a, a police department would do in a community. Um, we can also be there to engage with the community, which we do often uh, with a variety of safety fairs uh, at those buildings. Uh, and we also have a, a very large safety fair on the quad this October 4th, I believe it's scheduled for. Um, but we'll get that out to you. All our buildings, uh, we have the same model of protection. So all our buildings are fire suppression. All our buildings have fire monitoring. All that monitoring reports back to the NCC, which is our network command center. And of course, whenever we see trouble, whenever we see alarms, we respond, first responders to those buildings, just like we do with the, the buildings here on our campus. We also have what's called directed patrol. Here on campus, we have emergency responders. We have emergency responders that patrol those buildings three times a shift. So officers will go into the buildings, the exterior of the buildings, walk around, be seen, um, and you know certainly respond to service calls uh, anytime in between. Each of our access points, any access point to our building has camera systems. All our buildings have remote lockdown capability. Um, and uh, with with the cameras, with the alarms, and with the patrol, that's our primary uh, way to deter and detect and prevent any crime from occurring. If any of those things uh, you know, still don't make you feel safe or you see things that are unsafe, uh, we want you to give us a call. We want to talk to you about that. Does that answer your question, Rodney? Oh, absolutely, Phil. I was also doing for the benefit of others who 
um, or new faculty who or others who frequent the Spring Valley building. So thank you so much. All right, Phil, so I'm going to take a question in the chat quickly before we move to the next person. So this is from a faculty member who is speech impaired, uh, asking what mode of communication is available if they're ever in harm's way while on campus, given that anything that requires verbal communication would not be helpful. Okay, so the forms of notification that we have, I've, I've already put up on the screen. If there's any uh, additional ways that we can support someone, we ask them to contact us and we work with them directly because we that way we'll know exactly how to support them. But you know we've tried uh, we, we we're trying to use the FEMA model um, of of the variety of ways in which messaging can take place, but we also understand that there may be personal needs that we need to go direct and one-on-one -on -one with people. Just out of curiosity, and I'm sorry if you addressed this already, do the blue phones have the ability to essentially alert somebody without having to speak into it? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question uh, on this phone. Yeah, I, I was asking if the blue phones that are distributed around campus have the ability to, to essentially press a button or something to alert you to an emergency without speaking into the phone. Yes, so once the button is, is pushed, um, it rings here. And then of course we have cameras on site to see what's happening. Um, and the blue phone actually flashes so that it's easy for us to find. Um, and although you're not talking to us, as soon as you push the button, we're responding officers to that location. Great, thank you so much. I also see in, in the chat, Bridget mentioned that the Rave Guardian app might also be a good option for Antonio's need. Um, so that actually brings me to the other question further up, how can we sign up for alerts? And I think you brought that up, but if you could just reiterate that point, how to sign up for the alerts. So the alert program is not a opt in. Uh, you can opt out, but you're automatically in uh, when you're employed at American University and it extracts your email uh, information uh, every morning from colleague, which is will be workday soon, but it's now called colleague. It extracts that information. You own that account. You can go in and manage that account. So go to the emergency preparedness website, look for alerts and follow the prompts to open your personal account by using your username and password. And once you enter the account, you'll see your email address there and you can add your cell phone. And I believe you can add an additional three if you'd like. So if your cell phone number changes, as an example, you need to make sure that you go in and make the appropriate edits. Thank you so much. Uh, Antonio, I see your hand up. Did you have an additional question? It doesn't look I like it, not. okay. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Phil? Do you have a few more minutes? My email address is uh, P M O R S E, like Morse code. Uh, so you can always email me there. Uh, if you have any access issues, um, you can email us at access at American.edu. You can always, you're always welcome to come to our uh, police station. Uh, we're located in Don Myers building, terrace level, T18. So if you come down into the parking lot area, uh, we're down to the right with a glass, glass front. You're always welcome here. Uh, you're welcome here to tour our facility. Um, we have a, a pretty big, um, classroom roll call area that you're welcome to use um, if you want to get away and have a class someplace different than, than where you uh, normally do it. We're happy to host you here as well uh, with some advance notice. So we just want to be helpful to you and be a resource for you. I will also, uh, through Anna, 
send you uh, a PowerPoint about how to handle disruptions in the classroom, which was um, a uh, educational PowerPoint that we uh, collaborated with uh, campus, campus Life, the D uh, Dean of Students Office, and the Provost Office, and the Counseling Center. So we're gonna send that to Anna, and please take a look at that, and if you have any questions about that, let us know. Thank you so much, Phil. I, I want to remind everyone one more time too that we will share uh, most, if not all, of the PowerPoint presentations uh, that have been shared during orientation, including the one that Phil will add and send us. Uh, so you should be seeing those uh, sometime towards the end of the day today. Uh, also, if you have joined the orientation late, we have video recorded all sessions, so you will have access to that as well. Are there any more questions for Phil at this point? If not, I, I think we can take a, a surprise three minute break. Uh, so our next segment starts at 1120. So, oh, I see a question here actually. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Hi, I know I really want to break. Uh, I just had a quick question about, so should we use the Raise Guardian app if we do want a campus escort? Should we call the police department directly? Yeah, call us directly. That's that way, you know, we can get to you very quickly and there's no, you know, confusion as to the location. And uh, the officers will either come and walk you to wherever you need to go or drive you. Okay. 